Well, hello. I want to talk to you today about a pen that I never thought I would buy. This is the Platinum 3776. And you might remember, if you've been watching this channel for a while, I made some unflattering remarks about this pen, which is also a Platinum 3776. It's a, this was a special edition of Shoji. This guy is not special, but uh, I like it. So, what happened? Well, tell you the truth, I thought about getting rid of this pen, but uh, never did, and then I kept inking it up because for some reason it just kept always getting inked up, and you know what? Now, I've decided I like this model, so I might have to do a re-review of this pen at some point, but that's not what today is about. Today is about the 3776, just kind of a standard model. This is a... <laughs> Uh, Bourgeon, Bour, Bourgeonia, something like that. I, I don't speak whatever language the name is in. Something to do with wine or France or something. Anyway, red. Let's go with red. Uh, now, it is the same shape as this Shoji. Uh, all the 3776s, as far as I know, are basically the same shape. Uh, so nothing remarkable about that. Inside the cap, you can't see it with this pen, but there is a slip and seal mechanism that supposedly will keep your nib from drying out for two years. You can see it operate very well in the Shoji, so the close-up you'll see of the slip and seal is actually inside the Shoji, not this guy. But pretty nice. Uh, gold nib, uh, let's see, 14 karat. I got the soft fine. Um, I was kind of curious about soft fine, to be honest. That's the reason I got it. I really like it. <laughs> It's impressive. I have uh, some others that we'll be looking at later because this is not the only uh, Platinum I have purchased since that nasty review. I have a, is it called Chartre Blue, which I don't have handy, it's over there. And I have that, <laughs> oh, one of those lakes around Mount Fuji. I'm going to mispronounce it and offend the whole Japanese culture. Yamanaka, maybe? I'm not sure. But anyway. That's a soft medium. So you'll be seeing all of them at some point in the future. But let's talk about this guy. I love this translucent red. Um, I think the first thing that attracted me to the 3776 was the advertising for this pen because it shows it coming out of a glass of wine. Now, I tried to stage a photograph like that because I'm not going to steal somebody's copyrighted advertising for this video. So I tried to stage it. <laughs> I don't know, my, my wine is not the same color as this. It just didn't look cool. Probably because I didn't Photoshop it. I'm pretty sure Platinum did some Photoshopping. But, you know, not babbling. Let's talk about what I like and what I don't like about the pen. Well, I like the shape. I like the feedback. Some people say Platinum nibs are too feedbacky. I like it. Uh, you get nice line variation with this. Now, honestly, not as much line variation as I get with a Noodler's pen or with a, uh, my pl uh, Pilot... 95, no, Pilot Justice 95. You know, not as much line variation as those, but nice line variation even so. Uh, it's easy to clean, flex nib. Uh, you don't want to turn into an eyedropper, but I don't like eyedroppers anyway because it has a metal section right, or metal, oh, what's that piece called? Metal screwy on thing. Part of the grip anyway. Uh, just overall, like, and it looks like a fountain pen should look. It has some gold on it, a little accent, but not so much to go, gold, gaudy. It's just nice little accent. It's just a very understated beauty. Um, I'm going to now do a writing sample because, honestly, the close-ups and everything showed you how it shines, but writing with it really shows it off. When it compared to a Noodler's Conrad, by the way, I'm thinking I may be doing a rodeo soon with flex pens, uh, even though their Noodlers is the only one considered flex. Uh, they're about the same length, capped, uncapped. I'd say the Noodlers is, well, half an inch longer. Uh, posted, I do, I, I mentioned before, I don't usually write with pens posted, and I don't post this platinum. But posted, whoops, almost dropped him. Uh, posted, they're the same length. And by the way, both friction fit nibs. Uh, the I think the Platinum is a plastic knit, uh, feed, but not, not ebonite like the Noodlers. But overall, nice size pen. 
So now I'll do a writing sample. So Cletus here, I uh, mispronounced the name of the pen. It's actually pronounced Borgonia, and but with a French accent. I'll be honest, my French experience is uh, limited to a few hours spent when I was a little kid climbing Mount Chiminus in Quebec, Canada. Other than that, I really have no French experience at all. Uh, so uh, maybe we'll have to <laughs> find some other culture that I'm more familiar with next time so I can sound more smarter and stuff. All right, enough on that topic. So I apologize. I didn't mean to offend any of you French people out there who don't like hearing your wines mispronounced on Japanese pens. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, you might be able to tell I just changed the exposure on this. I'm using uh, Noodler's Black Swan and English Rose, which is a nice shading ink. Now with this fine nib, you're not going to see, even though it's a soft fine, you're not going to see the kind of shading you'll see with a broader nib. But uh, keep that limitation in mind when with your nib choice. I mean, if I wanted to see the shading, I'd have to use a different nib. Uh, this does have nice line variation. Now, uh, purists will tell you this is not a flex pen. It does not spread, at least I haven't been brave enough or stupid enough to spread it as wide as I do a noodler's pen. pen. But uh, I'd say that's a decent amount of line variation just for uh, regular writing. It's just very attractive. I uh, happy with it. Now, some people criticize this model because platinum pens tend to be have more feedback than other pens, and you know, for me, I don't care. I like the feedback. It just feels good writing with it. So I'm very happy with it. And by the way, one of the things I mentioned with the Shoji in my review of that is it looks kind of cheap. This one doesn't. I don't know if it's this nice deep red finish or the fact that I can't see all the injection marks or what it is, but I love the looks of this pen. It is sharp. We're going to do a writing sample. And because it is a fine nib, it will sometimes catch more and drag more than a more broad nib would. And I just got through saying I'm not a redneck or anything, and there goes the tractor all over again. Whoops, covered up the writing. Uh, I do live in a rural area, and tractors just happen in rural areas, and yeah, they're noisy. All right, so uh, and like I said, nice line variation with this pen, decent ink flow. I've never had trouble with it skipping and not keeping up. I just, overall, I'm thrilled with this pen. I am very glad I bought it, and... I'm glad I took the time to get to know the Platinum 3776 before giving up on it. And that's a lesson to learn about, well, any pen, really. You know, there's some people I just love now who I couldn't stand when I first got to know them. You just learn to see more in a person or a pen or anything as you get to know them. Sometimes that's bad, sometimes that's good. Uh, yes, I've had a few pens that wowed me out of the box and then later on I said oh yeah I guess I don't like this guy after all so uh, that said this would I buy this pen again absolutely in a heartbeat if I had the money saved up because it is kind of pricey uh, I will mention you can get this month this pen for much less you can from US retailers if you buy it from a Japanese retailer I saved about a hundred dollars purchasing this pen from a Japanese retailer and you know what it was worth it I will try and support local retailers as much as possible, but when we're talking hundred dollars, that's part of how I funded the other pen, other platinum three seven sixes that I have. So we'll talk to you later.